My name is John. Welcome to Hangar 37. As you can see, I unboxed and I'm ready to assemble my E-Flight Prometheus P2 biplane. The basic design of this plane was taken from the uh, standard Pitts S2. So, without further ado, we're going to get started with the assembly on this. And one of the first things I did is I had to work the uh, battery cover a little bit. This thing would not come out. I pushed this to pop up and you had to pry it. You started to, to ruin the edges on it. So I, I filed down just the very tip of the latch here. And uh, that seemed to, to solve the problem. Now also, these ends were sticking way up. Now this is somewhat pliable, and if you want to form it, 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 uh, it seemed to work. It all sat down in there nicely again. So once again, it all comes out real nice, but when you get it, it may not act like that. You may have to file that the latch a little bit. While I have this off, I'm going to check the motor mount screws to make sure they're tight. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, those are all tight. So that's a uh, pretty good size. It's a size 50 E-Flight motor in there. Uh, it's going to have a lot of power. That's the same motor that's in the Carbon Z-Cub. First thing they want you to do is put the landing gear on, which I suppose I'll do. Turn this upside down here. One of the things I use is a little plastic uh, tray to house the screws. A lot of times they'll roll off the bench under the bench, you can't find them. So this is always a good idea. Now, 13 millimeter, a little over a half inch. Okay. One of the things I also did is I took a marker and I marked all the edges on here. Because if you don't, you're going to see the, all the whites. A little tricky lining these up. Okay, one more. And then we can get to the wing. Okay, landing gear is on. Okay. Now, normally I do not like to put the rudder and elevator on. It just gets in the way. But this one has to be glued on. So, I think we will go ahead and do that. Now, they are saying to use CA glue. I'm going to take a little break here and I'll be back to you in just a bit. Okay, I'm back. I got the uh, landing gear on. And I put the rudder on. My uh, thin CA was all hardened up. I couldn't use it. So I used medium CA, put it in and put the screw in. Let it dry for an hour or so. It's perfect. Then I also added the wheel on here. And you got to be kind of careful that you don't just grab the the rudder. Make sure 
that you're putting the pressure equally otherwise you could break this when you're putting these screws in they're kind of hard to get in and kind of hard to turn so be kind of careful when you're putting that uh, plate over the back wheel and screwing that in so uh, that went well and uh, I'm gonna put the elevator up on it now well actually I think I'm gonna put the control rod in. Kind of a tight fit. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a little tricky on that. I should have centered these uh, servos. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's take a look. Okay, we're going to fire this baby up. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Okay, uh, I just put the control arm on, centered the servo. I am off of here. I'll do the adjustment on the uh, radio. Just a, a couple clicks, I think. So, we will go ahead and try and get... Yeah, this one's got to come off. And then the control rod's got to go from the the inside. There we go. Got that on. Now, okay, let's get this on. All right. Let me get this in there. And you want to be real careful on this. You don't want to force it. And let's see here. Okay, and this one you don't want to over tighten. That looks good. And you, if you got a little tool, if you got a ball joint pliers, makes it a little easier. To put them on. Yeah, it looks good. Now, we we'll get the other side in. Now on this side, you got to match up that square either carbon or fiberglass whatever it is that's the that square rod into the square hole and then also line up the round carbon rod looks good all right and we'll put the screw in that one okay once again once you feel that that plastic uh, making an indent in the foam stop. Okay, that's one big heavy battery. That's a 6S 5060C battery in there. Uh, okay, this looks pretty good. Mid rate, high rate. 
Wow, that's a scroll. Wow, that baby's gonna go all over the place. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect this battery. The, the motor was turning in the correct uh, rotation, which is counterclockwise. So I didn't have to muck with any of that on the uh, ESC wires and the motor wires. Okay, it's getting close to midnight, so we're going to call it a night. And I'll pick this up in the morning. And we'll finish off on the uh, main, uh, the bottom and top wing. And uh, I'm getting close to the end, so uh, getting excited, looking pretty good. I love that tail section. That really looks cool. And lots of throw on that, so. All right, uh, we'll take a little break here and we'll see you in the morning. Okay, I'm back and uh, I'm gonna put the uh, lower wing on. And uh, one of the things I did notice in other videos is to sand the uh, the carbon rods that they're so tight that you end up uh, denting the foam so I'm just going to do a little sanding on here so it doesn't catch on anything all right now I will wipe them down with a little rubbing alcohol. Okay, I'm going to take a break here and go wash my hands and I'll be back to you in just a minute. Okay, all right, I'm back. Uh, my camera didn't record again. What I did is I sanded the uh, tubes and took a little bit off. Uh, I watched a few videos where they showed that they were so tight people were damaging the foam, trying to get them put together. So uh, I sanded them and they're still a little tight, but not nearly like they were when I first started. All right, Perfecto Mundo. And don't over tighten. That one went in real nice. Now, let's see if we can get this other one in. We will, again, pull that out, make sure they are tight. Now we can slide it back into the wing here. And then slide her through this little hole. Now I had cut out that opening from the inside. I opened that up. I took an X-Acto knife and opened it up. Alright. Needle nose. Needle nose. I mean there's really an easier way to do this. Without a doubt. All right, let's see how that lines up now. Looks good. I've seen on some of the videos where there was a problem getting those to line up. But so far, knock on wood, I've not had a problem with that lining that wing up. Okay, again, don't over tighten. All right. Looking pretty good. Now, I'm using my own receiver, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the aileron channel and aux one. I will put my right wing 
in the aileron channel and I will put my left wing in my aux one. Now I will program my gear and aux one. Make sure you get your polarity right on here, your signal wires. I'm using a uh, Hobby King Orange RX receiver and they're marked pretty good. A single signal wire goes to the top. So we will check that. Okay, the bottom wing is in and set. I've got it hooked up. I've got to program my uh, DX9 and uh, do the mix and that and then we'll come back check and make sure everything's going to work properly. So I'll take a little break here and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back and I set up my parameters on my DX9. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, I did do the mix <coughs> with the uh, aileron to aux one and that works fine. There we go. This is high rates. Hello, goodbye. Just want to mention, don't ever ever do this with the prop on. Make sure the prop is the last thing that goes on uh, while you're doing any of your electrical alignments and servo alignments, uh, your, your uh, surface alignments, everything. Make sure that prop's off. Uh, it's a 15 inch, it'll cut your hand, it'll cut a finger off, maybe even your hand. If not, it'll put a uh, really, it could kill you. Put it that way. Safety first. I'm going to hook her up. Bind plug in. Six cell. Hit the bind button and turn it on. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Complete. Okay, bind is complete. And my rotation is counterclockwise, which is correct. Okay, everything looks pretty good so far with all the electronics and all the surfaces. I got a few, I want to adjust this. I'll do that off camera. And I'll get everything set up to put that top wing on. And I'll take a little break here. I'll be back to you in just a bit. Okay, I'm back. And I'm going to do the top wing. One nice thing about the top wing, you don't have to compete with the wires. And there's only two screws that go on the top. Alright, looks like it's taken. That's good. That's good. Okay. I think that's it. Now, very interesting arrangement they have here. They have a little pin that you pull out and put in. So we will try that. It's got a little tape on it. Yeah, I guess you take both pins out. And come on, you. All right. Looking good. Looking real good. Now we'll try and get those pins back in there. Pretty good. That one went in okay. Let's try this one. And yeah, let's see. 
There we go. There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. There we go. And that goes up in there. Nice. That's a nice deal there. Real nice deal. Okay. She's looking pretty good. Give me a little spin around on this. Looks good. Looks real good. All right. Well, the, about the only thing I got left on the outside is the connecting rods for the aileron, upper and lower aileron. That looks good. That looks real good. Okay. Make sure these are lined up. And once again, you get your little ball crank pliers. And you just pop it on. And you pop this one on. There you go. There you go. Pretty good. <clears throat> okay, everything lines up. I hope those uh, hold. They came popped off pretty easy, but we'll see. I haven't seen any on the videos pop off, so. Okay, all we're left to do is uh, balance the prop. Pretty close. Pretty close. Don't think it's going to cause a problem. I'll know when I fire it up and open the throttle up. Check the vibration. This you can get from Horizon Hobby, Amazon, Motion RC. And they're pretty cheap. They're only about 20, 25 bucks. But they work great. And you do want to balance all your props, even on your small planes. Especially on your big ones, because you'll you'll end up possibly crashing on a big prop like this if it's out of balance. Uh, I saw one where it ripped the motor right off its mounts and saved the plane, but yeah, it ripped the uh, the motor right off, ripped the wires, the motor, everything right off the mount because uh, being out of balance. So. That's it. Uh, I'm going to take a break here. We'll get the uh, prop on. And uh, it's snowing. We're supposed to get a foot of snow today, so I won't be able to do any taxi test on this today. Uh, we'll do that with another video, but uh, I will put this on and do a final wrap up and review on this plane. So we'll take a little break here and I'll see you in just a bit. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my. Uh, uh, center of gravity CG pins on here. What I use is sewing pins. Colored sewing pins. And okay. Not a bad little kit to have. I mark all my planes with the CG with sewing pins at about a quarter inch maybe three to four millimeter around a quarter inch okay now the CG on this is 132 from this point here if you can see it I think you can so it's 132 and I marked it here put a little mark on here Let's just double check it. Okay, 
132. Yep, real close. And then I took a notepad, squared it off to here, and marked it at the end, and I did the same thing on that side. I then take my super glue and I put a dab of super glue and then take your needle nose pliers and you just grab it and you put it in there like I said about half the pin sticking out and you let that dry and then you can use your fingertips to find your CG's and uh, I will probably balance it out to be nose heavy on the first flight uh, I will be using a 6S 5000 Ma 60C battery pretty heavy uh, so we'll we'll see how that turns out uh, I'm gonna let those dry so I'm gonna take a little break here I'll come back and we'll do the wrap up on this I'll see you in a bit all right okay that looks pretty good all right that is it Okay. The wheels make a lot of noise. I might try and do something with that later on too, but for now, let's just get this baby wrapped up. All right. I'm not going to do a motor test in here. I'll blow everything off my walls. So as soon as the snow clears out, I'll do a, a motor test and a taxi test out on my driveway. I have a separate video for that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, we'll do a quick walk around. Gotta say, looks looks good. Looks real good. Looks real good. I think it's one of the nicest planes I ever put together. Uh, and I'm encouraged that it's going to be one of the best flyers I've ever had. And you got a pilot in there, Skip Stewart, air shows. Not bad. Once again, this is John from Hangar 37 signing off. I want to thank you for watching. Watch for this in my FMS Pits and my Multiplex Rockstar. We're going to have a battle of the biplanes come this spring. I got a feeling this one's going to probably win out, but the Multiplex is pretty powerful. But I still think the best looking one is my FMS Pits. Uh, although this one is dynamic too. Uh, it's a close second. I, both of them are pretty good. Uh, the FMS Pits though, if you've seen my video, that's pretty much my design. I didn't do anything on this one, uh, so uh, I always kind of take a little special pride in, in, in models that I do a little something on. Uh, this is uh, going to be a nice showcase, but I really wasn't responsible for any of the design on it, even though it is just awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. So once again, I'm signing off. I'll uh, see you on my next video. I wish all you pilots out there blue skies and calm winds.